Hello everyone. Welcome to the first training session of SAP NewGL Accounting. In the SAP NewGL Accounting, we will be covering the following table of contents. Introduction to NewGL Accounting. Benefits of NewGL. Then classical versus NewGL approach. A comparison. And then we'll be covering the configuration steps, which includes activate new GL, ledger definition, parallel accounting, document splitting, document type, then the master data, and at last the end user testing and the various new GL reports. So moving up to the first point or the first content as per the table of content is introduction to new GL accounting. So talking about the new GL, new GL is an advanced concept within SAP general ledger accounting. This new concept was developed to accommodate the numerous requirements for carrying out the valuations and closing operations and financial statements for a company code according to the various legal, managerial, country and local accounting practices. Earlier till SAP 4.7 version, one needs to carry out the parallel accounting only by using additional accounts. So SAP NewGL has given the advantages, the more functionalities, so has to have various reports where you don't have to create additional accounts. So if you talk about more on the NewGL part, the NewGL as the title indicates is the new advanced option of configuration and implementation within the ECC system for the general ledger accounting module. This new approach was developed to accommodate the numerous requirements from the legal, managerial and corporates for local accounting practices. Basically this approach brings together much of the reporting and analysis completed separately by several different components in the ECC, SAP ECC system. With NewGL, SAP incorporates additional functionality that will offer information which otherwise normally obtained from the different areas of classical FI module. If you talk about the SAP 4.7 or SAP 5 version where these functionality was not there, there has to be separate modules to be maintained for different reporting perspective like for cost of sales ledger, uh, for sales related things you have to maintain cost of sales ledger, for reconciliation you have to do various reconciliation ledger used to validate and then reconcile the FI and the CO data for that so a separate reconciliation activity is to be done in the classical approach then again the managerial reporting handled by the cost center accounting and profit center accounting separately within the old version and even the reporting and analysis available by using a separate again module named as spatial post special purpose ledger account which is used for having different reports for parallel accounting. So these all things for these all different things in the old version you have to maintain different sub modules whereas in the new GL part SAP has provided all these together integrated. So we'll see what are the different benefits to it. So in this way the new GL accounting serves as a complete record of all business transactions. It is the center 
an up-to-date component for reporting where all posted transactions can be checked at any time in the real time. So the new jail gives you a whole, a whole new functionalities, advantages to the corporates with the growing business all around the world. So we'll see what are the different benefits to the new jail accounting. So as you can see, the different possibilities, advantages, benefits of new jail accounting. As you can see with the diagram on the screen, the different benefits or possibilities in the new jail. So the new jail functionality gives you the benefit for legal and managerial reporting. So you can have legal and managerial reportings as per different accounting standards or even as per different categories or characteristics like profit center wise reporting, segment wise reporting, business area wise reporting where as per the different management requirement the reports can be easily provided. The second point comes up is the standard enhancements and extensibility with custom fields. So in the old version these features were not there in the new new particular new or you can say the new GL ledger accounting SAP provides you various standard enhancements wherever you want you can add as per your requirement you can upgrade those reports by adding custom fields you can upgrade the tables by adding the customer fields and accordingly those values will be added up in the table. Earlier SAP didn't allowed, never allowed to add fields or make changes to any of the tables but now SAP has given you that even you can add field to the tables as well. Next is the financial reporting using any characteristics. So as said you can have reports on the basis of different characteristics. The characteristics over here re refers to the business area or profit center or segment. So you can have reports on the basis of document splitting. Splitting which is a very unique feature in the new GL accounting which gives you the functionality of splitting the document online on the basis of different characteristics like profit center or business area and with the help of this document splitting it becomes much easier to have financial statements at the company code level and even if required for entities such as at segment level. So for each document the system creates a zero balance for the relevant entity and it gives you the the very much precise reports on the different sub levels or segregated levels in the SAP system. Next comes up is the simple representation of parallel accounting. Now parallel accounting basically refers to the different accounting principles. So in today's corporate world where the business is so much globalized that you need your your financials to be prepared as per US GAAP, as per international accounting standards, as per IFRS, various international accounting norms. So the new jail gives you the feature of having that functionality and fulfilling those requirements within it where you can create various different accounting principles like US CAP or IFRS or international accounting standards or for that matter any any of the number of different local accounting principles. However, parallel accounting is not new to SAP but this functionality has been streamlined with the introduction of new GL accounting. Additional ledgers are now an inherent element of general ledger and greatly support the parallel accounting needs. So moving to the next is accelerated period end closing. 
so new gl give you the option for a faster period and closing where the real time integration of fi and co is done and no manual manual reconciliation needs to be taken place it gives you automatic depreciation calculations then balance looks by any dimensions ligand and management reporting for unified in one ledger you don't have to go for different ledgers to be maintained and have to reconcile or have to uh, look for the adjustments so even the balance sheet adjustment and your financial statement adjustments is no more required in the new GL accounting so what it does it it makes your period and closing much faster as compared to the last version next comes up is the transparency and consistency so it gives you more transparency as whatever the transactions take place and the document splitting of those on the basis of different characteristics are on real time so you can have reports you can check things yeah, even SAP has provided more transparency and consistency on the basis of different advanced modules where faster reports can be generated from the SAP system segment reporting segment reporting is a legal requirement in many countries like US GAAP and IFRS require a segment to be reported if the total external revenue of the segment exceeds any percentage of the total revenue they also requires to report income statement and balance sheets to be reported by segment now the segment over here refers to maybe a company have different segments like uh, the company would have been in in uh, insurance sector at the same time it could be in automobile sector as well so, or it could have different different segments like retail so these these different categories could be taken up as different segments in SAP system so the big change in the segment reporting is that there is now a separate field in the profit center master record where we maintain the segment and on the basis of that the profit center picks up the segment and it gives you the more consistent and accurate report on the segments part so you can have faster and more clear segment reports or reporting in the new GL accounting real-time integration for CO to FI so now in SAP new GL you don't have to maintain any reconciliation ledger for real for the integration of FI with CO as of now it is by default that the real-time integration or real-time reconciliation is done from the FI and the CO module for which there is no need of assigning any GL account for the reconciliation purpose or no manual reconciliation is to be done so it's real time nothing needs to be done on the FI CO integration part so these are the major major advantages of the new GL which gives you a much more edge than the last version and that's why SAP has been very very successful with the new GL accounting so the, the, these were the various benefits if even it has got much more benefits with higher ROI on your investments balance books by any dimensions faster closing then the transparency is already there in it with the drill down reports various new advanced reports have been developed by SAP uh, as per the different demands from the from the industry from the corp from different uh, uh, worldwide globally demand on the various reporting parts so those things has also been taken up so if we take a further more more of the benefits let's see in the next part so you can see now further unified financial and management accounting so it gives you more unity uh, with respect to the to the reports so it has one version of the truth stored in the ledger account it has got the same valuation no inconsistency no reconciliation needs to be done supports different reporting 
purposes like legal entity reporting can be done easily segment reporting is possible where you can break down your company into different segments and you can you can you can have segment wide reports which is very very critical for various decision making in the business then again the management reports are there which can be generated at real time in the sap system you can have your financials you can have other various reports from the system on a click multiple dimensional analysis like account analysis drill down reporting are there then bw remote reportings are there which provides you much more enhanced reports in a uh, where the data is too huge slide and dice for all dimensions predefined reports del delivered as sap content so there's a huge advantages of the new gl accounting in the general ledger accounting part so these were the various benefits that we discussed on the new gl accounting part now let's move up with the next part that is a comparison between the classical gl versus the new gl so you should know when you are going for learning the new gl you should know that what was the old version and what were the differences between the two what are the basic major differences so can you, you can have a look on the left hand side is your classical diagram on the right hand side is your your uh, new gl so you can see the general ledger in sap r3 so sap r3 refers to your classical gl whereas sap erp6 or sap ecc6 refers to your new gl so in the old or the classical gl you can see that each of the different parts are been subdivided because in the classical gl if you need a legal requirement you need to have additional accounts for cost of goods sold you need to have a different ledger for profit center you need to have a different sub modules so that you can get the management and the segment reporting then again special ledger is a separate sub modules so in a classical gl you need to maintain various things in a segregated manner in a segregated sub module parts which is much more complicated to handle uh, when when things need to be done whereas compared to that in the in the ecc uh, in the new gl part everything is integrated the new gl and the classical gl are two ways to implement general ledger functionalities in sap ecc5 and ecc6 new gl provides lot of benefits over the classical gl the new gl gives you the benefits like providing an extension to the ex existing functionality in the classical gl plus it gives you the new functionalities compared to the classical gl it gives you a technologically superior way to perform the functionality in a faster way as compared to the classical gl it is imperative to understand that the differences between the classical and the new gl to be able to understand which solution addresses the business requirement better and with with number of years been passed with the new gl the new gl has been much more advantageous for the corporate world for different uh, for for different reasons so in the classical approach users would have to retrieve the information through various areas outside of the gl as well such as as we discussed the special ledger account special purpose ledger sorry so if you look after the differences we can count it on one the extended data structure provides flexibility so sap in the classical part there were old tables as compared to in the new gl there is only one table where all the data are stored whereas in the in the classical part there are different number of different table for different things where the data used to be stored in the new gl there is only one table which is known as which is called as the total table in the new gl so one summary table provides you all the details and once the data has to be taken from one report obviously it will be much more faster as compared to 
taking it from four different tables. Segment reporting to ensure statutory requirement. So NewGL has document splitting functionality that enables segment reporting much easier. Standard segment reporting functionality is not available in classical GL. Real-time integration between FI and CO is possible in new GL accounting, whereas it was uh, it it was not possible in the classical part. Parallel accounting, new GL provides you non-leading ledger for parallel accounting like IFRS and CAP. Parallel accounting can also be implemented using account-based approach, which is also available in the classical GL. But the account-based approach is available in classical as well as in the new GL, but SAP prefers to use the parallel ledger approach in the new GL accounting, which gives you an extra edge over the account-based approach. So various benefits apart from that, reduced TCO by faster period close activities so we can have a faster period and and year end activities can be done the reconciliation is not required now as a period and activity the balance sheet adjustment is not required profit and loss account adjustment is not required activities related to special purpose ledgers are not required then again the depreciation posted is online instead of a batch session which used to be done in the classical part so gives you a lot of benefit even there are a lot of drill down reports which was not available in the classical GL so new GL has advanced drill down cap capabilities by segments and other characteristics so there is a difference between a, a small comparison between the classical GL and the new GL so this is what we have covered till now we have we, we went through the introduction of the new GL accounting the various benefits to the new GL then a, a small comparison between the classical GL versus the new GL accounting so this is just to an overview now we'll be moving up to the configuration part within the SAP system so in the configuration part we'll be covering activation to no, new GL accounting how the new GL accounting is activated. So next is ledger, which includes number of different configuration steps within it. Parallel accounting, document splitting, documents view, and then the segment. So we'll cover each of these different topics, which has number of configuration steps in them. So these are topics within themselves, which will be, will be taken up with the course of the training one by one. So moving up with the first configuration step, that is activation to new GL accounting. For new implementation, new GL is a default setting for all the new installations in the SAP system. So if you are going for any of the new implementations, you don't have to activate the new GL. The new GL will be already active as a default in the installation part as SAP has made it mandatory that from further on the new GL will always be active but if you talk about for existing clients in case of existing clients needs to activate the new GL but for which this they needs to go through the migration project so there are two different scenarios one is a new implementation case and another is an existing client for a new implementation the new GL con the new GL is active is already been activated as a default setting but for an existing client who are, who are moving from their old version to the new version like from the classical one to the new GL accounting in that case they have the option to activate the new GL account but activating the new GL is not so simple 
for migrating from an old version to the new GL, they need to go through a migration process. And that migration process is termed as a migration project in itself, where the old version data is migrated to the new software with a lot of migration activities. As in the new GL, there are many new features which are very, very active like document splitting. So in those cases, when the data are moved from the old version to the new version, then those, those changes within those particular data needs to be done. So a migration project is itself a project. It's not a so simple that we just went and activated the new GL and everything will start working it. No. Whatever prior to that the system was and the data there, those need to be worked on so that they will become eligible for the new GL system. So there is again a caution that activating the new GL ledger accounting results in system wide changes to application and customizing paths. So, to activate the new GL accounting, SAP has provided you the transaction code that is on your, you can see on the screen, FAGL underscore activation. So, once you execute this particular transaction within the SAP system, let's do that as on the screen. I have taken this transaction FHGL underscore activation so as to activate the new GL. So once I take this and click enter, it will take you to the next screen as you can see. It show you that it is already active. So this particular checkbox is already marked. That means it is already active in the system. But in case you are moving from an old version that is the classical GL to a new GL in that case you need to activate this new GL accounting but activating is not so simple for that you need to go through a lot of different activities and activation is the last option so this particular transaction is performed at the start of the course to enable you to explore the new functions as we did but when we talk about in practical scenarios in practice the executing this particular transaction that is FAGL underscore activation that we just uh, executed on the screen for existing customers is one of the last activities performed during migration projects leading up to the implementation of new GL, uh, new general ledger accounting. So this particular transaction for learning perspective we execute it at the beginning so as to have a look of the different functionalities but when you do it in the practical for an existing client this is one of the last activities which has been done while moving to the new GL accounting. So just to show, just I have shown you the how it works so you can execute this particular transaction and as you execute this transaction and you check box this will not be checked when you will be activating it so you need to select this out and you need to save the screen and once you will be save, saving the screen again uh, the request number will be generated for this and once the new GL becomes active many of the new tables get generated into the SAP system. So this is the first activity which you need to do for configuration of new GL accounting. But for an existing client as said this is the last transaction after completion of new GL migration project. This activation trigger uh, this particular the checkbox over here this act 
activation indicator is always done at the client level so when we activate the new chill this is activated for the whole client it's it cannot be done for one particular company code it will it will always be done for the whole client that means what are the different company codes it has it will become applicable for all all the company codes activating new chill results in wide changes to the customization path and table structure so once you activate this you will find that if you go to the SPRO transaction to the path after executing or activating the new GL only you will find that this new financial accounting new then if you expand this you will find financial accounting global setting new global uh, general ledger accounting new consolidation preparation new so this new mark which is coming up is always comes up when the new GL gets activated if the new GL is not active in that case it will not be there but it will be only financial accounting so activating new GL results in wide changes to the customization path and to the table structure so you can see the path over here on the screen a lot of different uh, in different modules there are different changes take place so the path keeps uh, changes from uh, to some extent more or less it remains the same but there will be some amount of changes uh, to the path as we have just checked for financial accounting that the new has been taken up over here so the path for the new general ledger accounting is added to the existing customization path as we can see on the screen now talking about the different table which take place when the new GL accounting gets activated classical GL accounting path is already there this financial accounting is related to your classical GL whereas fi financial accounting new refers to your new GL accounting even if you want you can you can execute a program and you can see even that uh, the different uh, if you want to hide this suppose for example I have activated the new GL accounting and now I want this classical path to be hidden from the screen and the new path should only be reflected I don't want these two financial accounting reflecting to me I need only one which is relevant for me so what I can do is I can hide the one which is not needed which belongs to the classical GL so that can even be hidden with the transaction SC38 SE 38 is to run the program so we need to run a program and once we run that program this particular part will be taken off so the classical path will not be there anymore in that case so let's execute the program SC 38 and the program name so the program name is R F a G L underscore S W A P swap underscore I M G underscore O L D. So once we we took this program and we execute it, so it asks you activate old OMG or deactivate old OMG. So what I want is I want to deactivate the old path so once we have selected the option over here deactivate old OMG we can go and we can execute the part over here and once we executed you can see now settings setting was saved that means the changes has been taken place so once you have done this particular program has been run you can go back and check the SPRO that what are the changes in the path has been taken place going to the reference IMG and now you can see that 
earlier there was financial accounting and financial accounting new financial accounting was related to the classical GL whereas financial accounting new is related with the new GL accounting so what happened is once we executed the program the financial accounting path has been hidden from the screen so this is what you can even do and you can hide in case you are activating the new GL in an existing client so this is how the, the it works all around about it so you have to take care that if you already use classical general ledger accounting in your production system you need to perform the migration of data to the new system before activating the new GL so this is how the new GL can be activated that is all about in the new GL part activation of new GL now moving to the next step is ledger a ledger is a section of a database table in general ledger accounting one can use several ledgers in parallel in simple words a ledger contains only those dimensions of the total tables that the ledger is based on and that are required for reporting purposes so what a ledger does is it takes the data into the different fields in the table which are required for reporting purposes there are basically two types of ledger one is leading ledger and the second is non-leading ledger in new GL accounting the leading ledger is based on the same accounting principle as that of the consolidated financial statement a leading ledger is integrated with all subsidiary ledgers and is updated in all company codes whereas the non-leading ledgers are parallel ledgers to the leading ledger they can can be based on a local accounting principle the non-leading ledger can have a different fiscal year variant and a different posting periods variants as per the company code to the leading ledger of the company code so let's understand this more with more clarity about the leading and the non-leading ledger because a ledger is a very very important part of the new GL accounting it plays a very very significant role in having all the different reports within the SAP system for various legal and managerial requirements so the leading ledger is based on the same accounting principle as said in each company code the leading ledger automatically receives the settings that is applied to the company code so the leading ledger always takes the things from the company code like the local currency the fiscal year variant and the posting period variant so whatever the currency and the fiscal year variant and the posting period variant is assigned to the company code the same will be picked up by the leading ledger as well so the leading ledger is integrated with all subsidiary ledgers and is updated in all the company codes the another important part in this is that there can be only one leading ledger so you have to have one leading ledger exactly in the system however SAP had already provided a SIP SAP standard leading ledger and that is what we most of the cases use the same leading ledger the leading ledger gets many of its control parameters from the company code as said like the local currency the fiscal year variant then the posting period variants the company codes are automatically 
get assigned to the leading ledger and once they are assigned you cannot deactivate the leading ledger from the company code even the group valuations of the company is done on the basis of the leading ledger so leading ledger has got a many many more significant role like even the the values which flow into the controlling module is always been integrated with the leading ledger and even the assets accounting part is also been integrated with the leading ledger only so that is why the leading ledger has got much much more significant role in the new gl accounting part moving to the non leading ledger non leading ledger part again has got its own significance but the non leading ledger does not receives everything from the company code you define the non leading ledger then once you have defined the leading ledger into the sap system then you can have a different fiscal year and the posting period variant for the leading ledger yeah but if you does not assign any fiscal year variant or the posting period variant to the leading ledger in that case the leading ledger will pick up the same fiscal year and the posting period variant which is assigned to the company code but yes you have got an option in the non leading ledger to assign the fiscal year variant to have a different fiscal year variant so we'll see furthermore when we will be doing the configuration of this leading ledger and the non leading ledger and we'll see what are the different things coming up in it. so i had discussed leading ledger in gl one ledger is assigned the role of leading ledger there can be only one ledger as a leading ledger and it is a must the group valuation is usually done at the leading ledger all company codes are automatically assigned to the leading ledger and cannot be deactivated the leading area of asset accounting that is area 01 is posted to the leading ledger the controlling module is integrated to the leading ledger and all the company codes are automatically assigned to the leading ledger part once you have done the configuration and you cannot deactivate once it has been activated so this is all about the leading ledger about the ledger the ledger and the leading non leading ledger part so moving on to the configuration steps the configuration steps as on the screen first we need to create the company code then define ledgers for general ledger accounting define currencies of leading ledger define and activate non leading ledgers assign scenarios and customer fields to ledgers define ledger group then maintain fiscal year variant and assign company code to a fiscal year variant so we'll moving with the first config step that is create company code the company code is an organizational unit used in accounting it is used to structure the business organization from a financial accounting perspective a company code in a general term refers to the legal entity in sap so in normal words we talk about company which is a legal entity the same is termed as company code into the sap system so a company code is a very important part in the sap fico module now the path is there on the screen as you can see we need to go to img 
then to enterprise structure, definition, financial accounting, and then edit, copy, delete, and check company code. So let's see how we can create a company code into the SAP system. So we'll be going to define the company code. Now clicking over here will give you the next screen. Now over here you have to double click on the edit company code data. These are the different uh, company codes which are already defined in the system. Now we will be going for 1200 so you can see that there is no 1200 code already defined so we can use the code 1200 over here. So we will go back to this now we will click on the new entries new entries. Now you can define your company code. A company code is basically a four character al alphanumeric code. So you can have 1200 or if you want you can have a different code like IBM as well. So it's up to you whichever you want. I would be going for a numeric code because a numeric code is what is preferred. So naming it as IBM LLC. Now again you can fill the address over here like I fill it as Texas then the country as we can have checked US the currency could be USD now in case you have any doubt you can check over here with this particular symbol or you can click on F4 on your keyboard and if you click on F4 it will give you the list of countries as it, in which uh, you can select so you can see there is a US United States in the same way you can check for your currency as well again F4 on your keyboard so you can check over here as American dollar as USD and select that for language you can go with this or F4 in the keyboard this will show you your language preferred is English now so we'll select English over here now we can save this now as already said a company code is basically a legal entity so these are not only the details would be needing when you save it it will come up with a new pop-up to fill further details so is your legal entity a company or a doctor or a mister or a missus or what or you can put up a blank as well so if it is a company we'll select company now we can name it as IBM LLC you can have a search term for this as well as like IBM you can fill the address over here address is optional but you can see this tick mark over here in the country this is a mandatory wherever you will feel that a field has been ticked it means it is a mandatory field you need to fill that it's a must so suppose I fill it over here as like 2020 this is now the city could be Texas the country I can go for selection options United States now we can go to the reason and again you can click on the F4 in the keyboard and you can see what are the options cities uh, it, it gives you as an option so you can see these are the different options where Texas is also there in it so you can select on Texas and the reason has been taken up over here apart from this these are the below details which you need to fill if you want otherwise you can skip this detail as well so you can select the telephone number you can fill the mobile number fax email ID and all other things if you don't want you can go to the enter in the stick green tick over here that will take you to the next means the details have been filled means the company code has been created but you need to save whatever you have created so we'll go for continuing it now you can see the data was saved means your company code has been created so you have created your legal entity in the SAP system you can see that IBM LLC is there in it so we are done with the creation of company code as on the SAP system even you can refer the this particular creation of company code to our 
enterprise structure video in which we have covered the whole enterprise structure how a company is defined a company code is defined in the business area and the credit control area and so so you can refer to the enterprise structure because once we are done with the new GL accounting you are supposed to configure the enterprise structure in the SAP system as well so that is about the company code we'll move to the next configuration steps in the next training session for today's training session we will be putting a hold over here and we'll request you to practice this all in 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 the SAP system we'll see you in the next training session till then take care thank you